me and Jerry, we want to make top shelf, high dollar premium alcohol. That's our goal for this season. You know, less alcohol, but for a higher price. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, get you a snort of it. What's it taste like? Tastes pretty good. Oh my God, son, it's ready. Holy, oh my God. That is fine. That's good enough to drink crack just like it is. When you mash in fruit and ferment it, it turns into wine. It's a semi-sweet, semi dry. Semi-dry, yeah. Oh my oh, God, it's good. good. This blueberry mash, this is some of the finest looking wine a man could ever lay his eyes on. Whatever we've done, by God, we've done something right. Let's get this stuff skimmed over here and get it in a pot. Got a nice thick cake on the top of it. Really, really pretty, real deep, dark in color. It smells great, tastes damn good too. Get some of that fine blueberry wine pouring here. That's about full. Cap her off. Let me get this started and you can tap that cap a little. The paceless cap. The paceless cap. Fire it up, son. Tell you what, let's go over and dip us off a little bit of that wine. That'd be good. You know, I've bought a lot of wine in my life. I've made a lot of wine at home in my life. But this is some of the best stuff I believe I've ever put in my mouth. That's too good not to drink, man, I'm telling you. Well, you know who would love this right here? Who? Jenna, my fiance. Me and Jenna, we've been together now for seven years. We've actually been engaged for basically seven years. We finally made a date to get married. We're gonna go ahead and put the last nail in the coffin, so to speak. Does she like stuff like that? Damn, she loves a good wine, man. She'd be over here with a damn straw sucking the bottom out of this damn thing. You know, the, the, the blueberry brandy is real damn good. Oh, yeah. This has got whole different, whole, whole different, different complexity to it. I'm gonna throw one at you. Something I ain't never even done, I ain't even attempted to do. What'd that be? You know how I like bubbly Oh, no, you like bubbly, all right. I'd like to make a champagne, sparkling wine, something like that out of this. A shine pain. I believe it's cleared up quite a lot. It has. Looks like it anyway. This wine, we've let it set, let the sediments go to the bottom. We're gonna siphon again and leave the sediment behind in the first vessels that we're pulling from. You ready? Right. There we go. Let her roll. Another time or two by Ned, she'll be right, won't it, baby? Right as rain, son. Man, this wine is beautiful. I mean, it's got that blueberry color, almost like a beet juice, so to speak, a deep red mahogany color. You can actually look right here next to you see, see, it. see all the floaties and stuff right here close to the bottom. Yes, sir, I see it. Yeah, that's what we don't want to get into. We don't want to lose the color and the good flavor of this wine by racking it a thousand times. That was done. Well, let's rack another. But if we don't get all the yeast out, racked off, it can create hydrogen sulfide which is that rotten egg smell. And nobody wants to drink a damn fart. Well, I'll tell you what, they wasn't kidding. They said it was a timely process. Yeah, it takes a long damn time to do all this, don't it? Just racking it off is taking enough time. If it, you want it to be right, I guess we gotta take our time and do it right, right? That's right, right. <laughs> right, right, son. Well, let's get these washed out. Last year, everything come to a screaming halt. This year, everything's blowing up, going wide open. People can now afford a good high-end product. This is gonna be something different that people are gonna to wanna to get their hands on. This is a fine, shine pain. We'll just check these and see exactly what we got going on. Champagne should be right around 12% alcohol by volume. But the wine itself needs to be about 10% because the second fermentation that makes our bubbles will only create two more percent of ABV. When we mashed in all these blueberries, we wasn't really concerned about the alcohol content because we was going to run this through and make a brandy out of it. What do you say? The proof? Mm-hmm. Scared to say. No, over here. Well, it looks like about, about eight. About eight? Yeah. yeah, I reckon you're right. You know, 8% is a lot down closer to the 10% we need to be at, but still, I don't know what in the hell we're going to do to make it work. We got good flavor across the board. All we gotta do is add a little fortification juice here. Have her ready to rock and roll. Where on. she needs to be. Jerry comes up with the idea of putting some brandy that we've already run off of these blueberries into this wine to bring it up to the 10% mark. So what we're doing here is we're actually adding our, our uh, blueberry brandy to our 
blueberry wine. We're actually bringing the ABV up on our wine, so it'll be like a normal champagne ABV would be. You know, I'm not wild about, about putting brandy in the champagne, because if we sold the brandy and the champagne separately, that's more money in our pockets. But because this wine turned out so good, this gives me and Jerry a unique opportunity. Oh, look at that pretty stuff. We're going to bring something very special and high end to the market. It's showing about 10 and 11. That's what we're looking for, ain't it? If we got it just right, you know, me and Jerry, we don't want to serve weak champagne. We don't want people to say, you know, that's good, but it's awful sweet and ain't no alcohol there. It's hard to get her done right here, Jerry. We want to give them a good little punch. When they take that swallow out of that glass, that's blueberry champagne with a good kick of alcohol. Cap that bad boy off. Let them set, let them settle. We're ready for bottling. Next step, we got to do our second fermentation. We got to put our champagne yeast in each bottle, a little extra sugar. That brings the ABV up a little bit more, but creates the bubbles as well. It not take that long to do, does it? No, just a few seconds and it's full. Modern day inventions, huh? How many mountain shiner made champagne have you ever had? No. I don't think many people has. We've got 48 bottles of this champagne bottled up, and now we've got to put our champagne yeast and a little bit of more sugar in each bottle and cap them off with a bottle capper. Then we can ferment under pressure, which can uh, creates your bubble effect inside of the wine. A quarter of a teaspoon of sugar, a quarter of a teaspoon of champagne yeast to each bottle. If it's not the right amount, it could not do anything at all. It could come out perfect or you can start exploding bottles. The cork on a bottle of champagne, that bubble that comes out that pressurizes it, that's the carbon dioxide. That's the result of the yeast eating the sugar, creating the carbon dioxide gas. Can't wait to see these damn bottles bubble up. You know, these caps that we're putting on, this is just strictly to be able to do our fermentation process under pressure. We're gonna get rid of those caps. Then we'll put our regular cork in our wire cage around it, keep the cork in place, and then it's ready to drink. Be Hello, sweetheart. Hey, baby. What are you doing? Um, I've been looking online at a few dresses, and I think I found me two. Um, I think I need some help deciding, though. Okay. Well, it's whatever you want, baby girl. And I found a few caters. I think you know that'll give us a really good deal. That's cool. That is great. Well, me and Jerry, we're actually in the middle of our second fermentation on our blueberry champagne. Oh, is that going to be for the wedding? 